morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Lo from Taipei, Taiwan, Taipei Veterans General Hospital. And I'm a colleague from Dr. Shan Chen's lab. And it's my pleasure to present my study here. The title of my presentation is Different Patterns of Atrial Remodeling After Catheter Ablation of Chronic Atrial Fibrillation. And we know that both electrical and structural remodeling happen in the patient with atrial fibrillation. And catheter ablation has become an effective treatment for the patient with atrial fibrillation. A recurrence of atrial fibrillation is an issue after catheter ablation. And in the previous study, atrial remodeling with progressive decrease of left atrial voltage had been reported in the patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillations with recurrence following ablations. And in this slide, I will show you the case. The patient had paroxysmal atrial fibrillation before the index, the first procedures. And you can see the maps, the atrial maps in your left hand side. And the upper panel shows the left atrium uh, before the first procedure. And you can see that only small uh, low voltage areas that were uh, demonstrated in gray colors in the left atriums. But the patient had recurrences months after the first procedures, and you can see the atrial maps obtained in the second procedures. And the low voltage area increased during the second procedures. And also, the left atrial global mean voltage also decreased uh, during the second procedures. And but the left atrial volume from the CT images remains similar, and the right atrial uh, voltage also similar between procedures. So that means there is a progressive electrical remodeling without structural remodeling in those patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And uh, so the atrial substrate turns into a more complex entity after therapeutic interventions. How about the patient with chronic atrial fibrillation after ablation? So in this study, we aim to clarify the change of substrate properties in the patients with recurrences of atrial fibrillation after a prior successful catheter ablation of chronic atrial fibrillation. So, is the substrate become worse, or it can be better? So, the methods of this study is that we enroll 120 consecutive chronic atrial fibrillation patients, and they all have the ablation uh, during the first procedures. And atrial fibrillation recurrences in 36 of the patients. And in 16 of them, they recurred as paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and are analyzed in group one. In 20 of them, they recurred as chronic persistent atrial fibrillation and were analyzed in group 2 and all 36 patients received a second ablation procedures. And in this slide, I will show you the table of the baseline characteristic of those patients. And you can see that clearly that there is no differences between the age, gender, AFib durations, and underlying diseases and also the left atrial diameters and left ventricular ejection fraction obtained from the echocardiography remain similar between both groups. But the left atrial volume uh, shows smaller in group one, and the left atrial volume is bigger in the group two. And about the operation strategies, 36 consecutive patients recurrent of atrial fibrillation, they were refractory to two anti drugs before the first procedures. And all of them received EP studies and catheter ablation under the guidance of electroanatomy mapping system by using the novice systems during the first and second procedures. And all patients underwent the transthoracic, transesophageal echocardiography and 3D CT images of the left atrium before each ablation procedure. And the stepwise ablation procedures were shown in the right, and you can see the first step is the circumferential PV isolations. And if the atrial fibrillation persists after the first steps, we will do the linear ablations, including the roof linear ablations and mitral linear ablations. And if AFib still persists, we will do the third steps. That means the cafe ablation targeting the maximum continuous cafe size. If the AFib still persists after three steps, we will do the cardioversion for the patient. And after restoration to the sinus region, we will, uh, we will search non-PV focus and try to target those non-PV triggers. And if the AFib terminate during any steps during ablations, then we'll stop the procedure. So the procedure endpoint is AFib terminations. So about the substrate mapping uh, strategies, 
that bi-atrial electro anatomical maps and sequential voltage maps were constructed uh, bipolar is a ground filter between 32 to 300 hertz. And the bipolar mapping points were collected and analyzed by an offline software. Approximately 150 sites were obtained in each atrium. And the mean bipolar peak to peak voltage throughout the entire chamber for the first and second procedures was compared in the same patient during science reason. And the low voltage zone was defined as a bipolar peak to peak voltage of less than 0 0.5 millivolts. And the left atrial volume was obtained from 3D CT imaging. And the general characteristics of the results during the first procedures, all patients received four point isolations. And additional non proven ectopies were ablated in seven patients during the uh, first procedure and 15 patients during the second procedures. And similar procedure ties, fluoroscopic ties between two groups in the first procedures were found. And the second procedure was performed around 200 days in group 1 and group 2, and there were dif no differences between them after the first procedure. In the multivariate analysis, the larger LA volume was the only independent predictor of recurrences as chronic atrial fibrillation. So, in this slide, I will show you a typical case from group 1 patients. And you can see that during the first procedure, the patient had chronic atrial fibrillation, and there is extensive low voltage areas in the left atrium. And the patient received the operation procedures, but he recurred uh, months later and showed as a paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And you can see that the low voltage area decreased during the second procedures and also increased in the high voltage areas. And the global mean left atrial voltage also increased during the second procedure in the left atrium, but the right atrial voltage remained the same between procedures. And the CT volume of the left atrium improved, became smaller during the second procedures. So there is a reverse electrical and structural remodeling in the patients in group 1. And regarding other electrophysiological parameters, you can see the low voltage zone decrease in the left atrium between procedures, and low voltage zone index also decrease, and the total activation time decrease in the left atrium, and the surface area of the left atrium also increase, uh, decreased. But there, is, there was this concordance of the biatrial structure during recurrence. That means the right, right atrial electrical parameters remain similar between procedures. And in this slide, I will show another typical cases obtained from the group 2 patients. And you can see that in the first procedures, there, there, uh, were, there were, were low voltage zones in the left atrium. And during recurrences, this patient recurred as the chronic atrial fibrillations. And you can see that the low voltage areas increased, become more extensive during the second procedures. And in these groups, the left atrial global mean voltage also uh, decreased in the second procedures when compared to the first procedures. But the CT volume of the left atrium remains similar and the right atrial voltage also remains similar between procedures. And about the electrophysiological parameters, there is an increase in low voltage zone and low voltage zone index and also prolongation of the left atrial activation times in group 2 during recurrences when compared to the first procedures. And there is no progressive structural remodeling during recurrences and left atrial surface area remain the same during the second procedures. And also the right atrial parameters also remain similar during the second procedures. So about the summary of the results, only, <coughs> excuse me, only the left atrial volume but not the electrical properties predicted the type of AFib recurrences in the patients with chronic atrial fibrillation. And the left atrial mean voltage increased with a smaller low voltage zone and LA volume decreased when FV burden decreased during recurrence. The left atrial mean voltage got worse with extensive low voltage zones developed when FV burden remained the same during recurrences, but the left atrial volume remained similar. And after a follow-up of 27 months, 100% in group 1 and 70% of patients in group 2 remain in silent reason. 
So the, <coughs> the patient in group one had a better outcome. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the subject property changes in the patients with chronic atrial fibrillation <coughs> undergoing catheter ablation are more complex than we thought. A better outcome with reverse electrical and structural remodeling occurred after catheter ablation of chronic atrial fibrillation when recurrences was paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And progressive electrical remodeling without any structural remodeling developed in those with a recurrence involving persistent atrial fibrillation. And the phenomenon did not occur in the right atrium. And thank you for your attention. <coughs>